Shri Tripura Rahasyam Mahatmya Khandam Aum Shri Ganesha Sharada Guru Bhyo Namaha Namaste So last time we were going over some of the benefits of studying this Mahatmya Khanda of the Tripura Rahasya. Now, you have to understand there are three sections to this book. The Mahatmya Khanda is first, then the Kriya Khanda or Karya Khanda, and then only the Jnana Khanda. So the Jnana Khanda is the, the completion of the work. Uh, but most people haven't even started on the beginning. <laughs> so they really have no access unless they have done serious sadhana in a previous life. Now, Ramana Maharshi, he states in his Guru Vachaka Kovai, verse 83, that he teaches on the Vivartavada platform. And if you go look at our chart, a good old chart of the four darshanams. Vivartavada is the third stage before ajata, which is ultimate enlightenment. How many people are ready for that? Well, look at the percentage. Only a tiny percentage of human beings are actually ready for that stage. Most of us who even qualify for religion at all, <laughs> real religion, are in the lower two stages, Dvaita Vada and Vishishta Dvaita Vada. So we need a teaching to come up step by step to the qualification, the high qualification required for the Ajata stage. So the people who are giving uh, or claiming to give access to Ramana Maharshi and similar teachings about Advaita to people who don't have these qualifications, well, what can we say about them? <laughs> They're not following the actual teaching. The actual teaching is that first you become qualified, then you approach the higher levels. Or as my Adi Guru Srila Prabhupada used to say, first deserve, then desire. Desire what? Enlightenment. Enlightenment is not cheap. It's not something you can get in a weekend workshop or even a month-long seminar. It's a lifelong or many lives long path. So what we're doing here is laying the groundwork, giving the foundation, the karma yoga and the jnana, uh, sorry, bhakti yoga that lead to jnana yoga. So let's continue with the next verses that describe the wonderful benefits of studying this Mahatmya Khanda. It grants erudition when well written, grants desires when worshipped. Where the story and glory of Sri Devi Tripura, which is abundant with knowledge, detachment and devotion, which is listened to by Narada and other great sages, is sung, what is not achievable? It is like a wish-yielding gem, Chintamani. So as we mentioned before, back in the days, the scriptures weren't published by a printing press like they are now, or on the internet even. <laughs> they had to be copied by hand. So if you would take and borrow a copy and write it out by hand, the benefit from this is you gain erudition, knowledge of how to write and how to understand words. This is given by Saraswati, who is, of course, one of the emanations of Tripura. It grants desires when worshipped. Now, how can a book grant desires? <laughs> this is a wonderful secret. And it has to do with the power of the holy name. Because this book is about Goddess Tripura, 
Tripura Sundari. It mentions her name many, many times in many different contexts. In fact, it mentions her name thousands of times. So just by hearing this scripture or by reading it or chanting it out loud, one will be exposed to the vibration of the holy name of the goddess, which is not an ordinary name because it does not refer to any object of the creation, a temporary phenomenon with a beginning, middle and end. Indeed, it refers to the creatrix, uh, the goddess who is the creation, who exists prior to it and remains after its dissolution. So, in other words, these names, these words, have no referent to any temporary phenomenon. Therefore, they are called divyanama, transcendental names. Shabda Brahman means the spiritual sound vibration, transcendental sound vibration. And when one hears, reads, studies, chants, contemplates, or worships in any way, these holy names, confirmed, peacock, <laughs> one gets tremendous spiritual advancement, which is not obtainable in any other way. So, just as a way of uh, illustrating this, I want to show, I want to go on a, a tangent and show the worship of the, uh, the Lakshmi Puja, okay? The Mahalakshmi Puja gives all kinds of incredible benefits. And this is my promise to you, that if you follow along this series about the Lakshmi Puja, that you will get, well, basically whatever you desire. So you have to come up with a desire that you want in particular, and then meditate on it while hearing these videos. The next few videos, I'm gonna go on a detour. Huh? I'm gonna go off the storyline, leave the, the script for a while. <laughs> because I want to demonstrate how these mantras work. And my promise to you is that if you you make up your mind what you want, and then you listen to these videos, these upcoming videos with faith, you will get your desire. Huh? And then you have to post a comment and tell your story. Okay? That's the deal. So, what is this business about worshipping the mother? Huh? Why, God is usually worshipped as a male. Huh? That's because the devotees in the first two stages, Dvaita Vada and Vishishta Dvaita Vada, they generally see in the world that power, influence, wealth, and so on are pursued and obtained by men. It's a man's world, you'll hear people say, right? So, while God certainly has male forms, beginning with Shiva, Vishnu, and so on. God also has female forms, beginning with Mahalakshmi, Tripura Devi, Saraswati, and so forth. So, these forms are the energy that actually does the work. See, there are, there are three gunas. Goodness, sattva, passion, rajas, and ignorance, tamas, which correspond to creation, maintenance, and destruction of the material forms. So they have three gods who represent their intelligence and intention. Uh, the mode of goodness is Vishnu, the mode of passion is Brahma, and the mode of ignorance is Shiva. It's not really ignorance. <laughs> It would be better to say creation, maintenance, and destruction. 
of all material manifestations. Now, so they are the intelligence. Those gods are the intelligence and the intention behind these modes of nature. But the actual energy that makes it all happen is the Shakti. And the Shaktis are also three. Huh? There's Tripura Sundari is the Shakti of Shiva. And Lakshmi is the Shakti of Vishnu. And Saraswati is the Shakti of Brahma. So if we worship them, if we invoke their holy names and the mantras that, that liberate their power, then we experience that Shakti. <laughs> I'm trying to convince you so hard. Why? Because I did an experiment. I made a private channel and I invited certain viewers to join that channel, right? And maybe about a dozen altogether joined. And I asked them to do one thing, learn a 30 second ritual, which involved three Sanskrit shlokas. And really none of them could do it. But if you want to gain these powers, the shaktis, uh, if you want to, to serve as a conduit, as a uh, connection to the energy of these, these powerful feminine forms of God, you have to learn Sanskrit. Why? Because that is the language of the Vedas. In the old days, children would go to the Gurukula, the house of the Guru, and they would learn the Vedic mantras by rote, by memory. Huh? They would memorize them for years. And then, once they grew up a little bit and they developed some more intelligence, then only the Guru would explain the meaning. So, in the West, we have it backwards. We want to understand the meaning first and then learn the prayers. <laughs> but Chandrasekhar Indra, uh, Mahaparama, he explained very nicely. He said, if you're sending a letter to a foreign country, you have to write the address in the language of that country, isn't it? If I send a letter to Germany and I try to write the the address in Hindi, <laughs> it's not going to get there. So if you want to send a, a message to God, you have to send it in the language of God, Sanskrit. Sanskrit is ancient beyond any history. Sanskrit empowers, or rather uh, conducts the powers of these Shaktis. This is a deep, deep secret. And most people are asked to take it on faith, but we're giving, <laughs> it's true, isn't it? But we're giving all the reasons behind it so that you Western thinkers will understand we're not doing this arbitrarily. It's not just a form that we are slavishly imitating. This is a real science, the science of transcendental sound, Nada Yoga or Shabda Yoga. So, in the higher two stages, the devotees generally worship the female forms of God. Why? Because they're the active ones. They're the ones that do the work. Uh, the, the male forms of God simply are, are static, passive. Huh? They, they sit around and get worshipped <laughs> while the ladies in the back doing the housework. <laughs> right? <laughs> These are deep archetypes. Try to understand. You can't cheat God. You can't just do a little ceremony. Uh, my friend Michael from Australia was telling me he has a friend who, who did a Ganesh Puja, Ganesh Mantra, for like a month. And then he said, but it wasn't working. I'm not rich. So I stopped. Well, come on. A month? Look, if you come to me and say, look, I'm going to be your disciple for a month. Now give me all your secrets. Ha, good luck. <laughs> you have to prove yourself. You have to show dedication. You have to show devotion. 
or you actually have to develop devotion. And that takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. So you have to make a commitment, if you're going to use these methods, to use them steadily for a significant amount of time. I mean, my commitment is I'm going to use these methods for the rest of my life, however long that is. Uh, the way things are shaping up, it could be millions of years. <laughs> Not in this body. Uh, I have to take a new body which can uh, implement these wonderful blessings that I'm getting. And you can tell I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so ecstatic. And I want to share this with you. But hey, you have to cooperate. You have to do the work. So all I'm asking for uh, is... You come up with a small desire, not, you know, king of the world or something like that. <laughs> that position's already filled, by the way. So take a, a small desire, one that, you know, you could easily get by some other method, some other kind of work, okay? And hold that in your mind and watch the upcoming videos on the Lakshmi Puja. And my promise to you is you will see significant progress in that area of your life. Maybe you won't get, you know, the Mercedes parked in the driveway. But you will get the opportunity to make that happen. And that's, I mean, how much is that worth? It's like your big break, you know. In Hollywood, the actors and actresses, they pound the pavement going from one studio one agent to another, sometimes for years, until they get their break, right? And then they do their best, they work their hardest. So really, what we're asking for is a break, an opportunity to make further advancement. And this comes by the will of God. Aung Tatsat. Aung Harihi Aung.